All right, time for another PID controller video. I built two of these. One of them I sent to Elvis Ammo and the other I sent to Fortune Cookie 45 LC. This morning, Elvis Ammo posted a video causing trouble. And this is a bit of a response to that. What he's wanting to do is like right now you can see like up here on this uh, rickety bracket is my thermocouple. And I've actually got a second thermocouple just sitting here in the lead right now. So instead of going with this sort of a setup where the uh, thermocouple goes down into the, to the lead, he's wanting to try to deconstruct the thermocouple and then run it inside of the pot and have it probe temperature right at the nozzle where the, uh, where the lead comes out, which is not a bad idea. He was able to do that successfully, but he had around a 20 to 30 degree uh, difference between his nozzle temperature and another thermocouple that was up sitting down into the lead. The quick and easy answer to this is there is an offset you can set in the PID controller. We'll go over that here in just a little bit. But before we do that, I want to uh, kind of explore and see if maybe there's a uh, if I can recreate his offset and see if we can learn a little bit about thermocouples. So as you might be able to tell, I've got my PID set to 700 degrees and this pot is warmed up for the most part. It's sitting at 687 right now, 688. The thermocouple that's currently connected to it is the old thermocouple on the bracket. So if I take this other thermocouple that's just kind of sitting down in the lead. I'm trying to keep the tip of the thermocouple away from the, from the sides of the pot because that's where the burner is. And if it's sitting right up against the burner, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some measurements that aren't quite perfect, but yeah, we'll see. But okay, so this one's reading 695. If we switch it out to the other one very quickly, It is reading 703. Let me try to move its tip over a little closer to the other one. It's dropping a couple degrees here quickly. Okay, so that guy reads 700 right there. Let's swap it back really quick. And that one's reading 703. So that's close enough. I just wanted to, before we tear anything apart, I wanted to measure them against one another and see what the delta was there between the two uh, between the two thermocouples. Before I shipped off the controllers to Fortune Cookie 45 LC and Elvis Ammo, I did test them against one another using my thermocouple and I tested all of their thermocouples. So that was five thermocouples and three PID controllers I was testing side by side and they all read within five degrees of one another is what I found. So if you're curious about how precise these thermocouples are, you know, plus or minus five degrees or so at a 700 degree pot is about what I've seen. So now that we've established that these two thermocouples are reading very close to one another, I mean, let's do it one more time here. So this one's, this is the original one. It's reading just below 700. Plug in the other guy, move its body over by the other, and 702, 701. So it looks like this one might read a couple degrees lower than the other, but we're talking about just a couple, just a few degrees and nothing really to freak out about. So here's what I need to do. I need to dump the lead out of this pot. It's got about 15 pounds of lead in it. And while that's cooling off, what we'll do is we'll have an up close look at the thermocouple and see what we can figure out about how it works. Because I don't know a lot about thermocouples and I think a little bit of knowledge will go a long way in this process. Okay, while the pot cools down, let's have a little closer look at the thermocouples. I've got a glass of ice water here and just kind of cooling these guys off, letting them chill out a little bit. Theoretically, it should be 32 degrees, right? Or, well, it's it's hard water, so maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe 30, 31 degrees, something like that is what you would expect, I think. And let's see, this one so far is reading 39. Switch over to the other one. 
Get in there. Looks like this one's pretty close. You can also do this with boiling water just to see if you're in the ballpark. But it looks like these might be reading a little bit high at freezing by a couple degrees, but they're not that far off. They're not reading 150 or anything goofy like that. Here's my question. I, I don't know anything about thermocouples. And whenever I watched Elvis Ammo's video, my first thought was I need to find out better about which part of the thermocouple is actually taking the reading. Is it only the tip? You know, that is it only the tip or is it the whole thing? Well, here's the quickest way I could think of doing this is here's a lighter and I'm focusing on the wrong part of the screen. There we go. That's a little bit better. So let's say if we put fire back here at the base of the thermocouple, absolutely nothing happens. Still saying 64 degrees. So let's work our way out. It looks like it's just going to be the tip. Yep, so all of this, none of this, hold on, am I on the right thermocouple? Yep, I'm on the right thermocouple. <laughs> These react pretty fast, so I would expect it to, uh... there we go, starting to climb, and then at the tip, there it goes. Now it's uh, climbing very rapidly. So it looks like the thermocouple, that junction, the junction between the two wires at the tip, is really the only part that matters. Let's cool this guy off in some ice water again. And let's tear it apart. The thermocouple come apart very easily. You just, uh, the springy thing, you just kind of pull it and it comes loose. And then there, there's a set screw right here. So if we loosen this set screw up a bunch, then the entire thingy will come loose. So it looks like this is the part that was inside and up here at the tip is where the two wires come together and they are just looks like they're twisted together and there may be a little ball of uh, weld or something at the very very tip. By my understanding apparently that tiny little junction is the only part that matters. So let's do a couple more tests here. Let this guy chill out for a minute, 81 degrees. Let's try the fire again. Yep, nothing, nothing, nothing. Been out here at the tip, it immediately, very hot, very fast. You know what, fire probably wasn't a very good idea here. It's probably hot. It's probably a little hotter than uh, maybe some of this stuff is rated to take. <laughs> I don't know. But the basics of it. So th the reason why this, uh, you know, originally came to mind on Elvis Ammo's design, he puts this junction under a screw at the bottom of the, of the lead pot. And I wasn't sure whether the rest of the first few inches of the thermocouple not being like in really, really good contact with the pot was maybe uh, causing his temperature issues. But it doesn't look like that would be the case because the tip is all that matters. Now, here's the other question I've got. So with my PID design, the, uh, the ground, the green wires here are connected to the chassis so I'm curious, if, like if you short this out, ground it out on something, does that screw up the reading? So right now we've got 82 degrees. Let's touch this to ground and see if it screws up the reading. Good. It doesn't. So it doesn't look like uh, being placed under that 
under that nut, under the pot will make a whole lot of difference. So that's, that's a really good thing. So this is all turning out well. We only need to, we only need the tip of the probe <clears throat> and touching it to other metals doesn't seem to make any difference. So it's all good, brother. We'll see if it reads closer to 32 without the, uh, without the sheath on it. Like 36. So pretty close. It's still accurate for the most part. Without the, uh, without the probe. All right. Now I need to tear apart my pot and we will figure out a way to feed this naked wire into the pot like Elvis Ammo did. And then we'll try putting this right under that screw just like he did. And we'll see if we get the same temperature differential he did. Of course, in Elvis Ammo's video, his pot was brand new and it came apart no problem. Mine's being a little bit more of a pain in the butt. I did finally get the, uh, the pot to come out. The four screws there, no big deal. And then the nut there, this, uh, this guy, yeah, you guys can figure it out. Elvis Ammo did a pretty good job of it. The problem with mine was, uh, was with this rod. This rod right here that has your uh, mold guide comes up and pops out the top and then there's a nut there. It was, uh, I really had to give it the business here to get that off of the, uh, the threads on that, on that bolt. So that was, that was the pain in the butt. But down there is our heating coil. Yeah, down there is our heating coil. And here's our pot that just sits right on top of it with the nozzle there. That is what Elvis Ammo did, was put our thermocouple wires underneath the spout and then just lay this across and pop it out about right here. Drill a hole right here for the wire to come out. So I guess the first thing, we'll see how easily this nut comes loose. I've just got some, I've just got a crescent wrench here handy. I'll go get a better tool if I need to. Yeah, no problem there. Now my nozzle, since this isn't a brand new pot, is uh, stuck in there with, with lead. Wasn't You can never get out all of the lead that you want. So I've, I've, I've cut back some of the sheath here and there's a pretty, pretty decent little amount of bare wire hanging out the top. That's what I'm going to do just like he did and put that underneath that nut and we'll put it on the left hand side so that as we tighten the nut it should tighten down onto the metal I think okay tighten it back up All right, that guy is connected now. Let's do a really quick test. We'll just kind of set that there. Let's fire up the PID controller and make sure we're not getting any funny readings. We should still be getting uh, room temperature readings. All right, which end is the one we need? There it is. All right, flip on the PID. 83, 82, that's probably about right from where I've been handling it with my fingers so much. I think what I need to do now is figure out where I want to drill my hole. Okay, I decided to put my hole at the same place Elvis Ammo did back here on the right hand side. It's pretty much out of the way. And we'll be able to take our spring thingy back up there, twist it into the hole a couple times and get it to stay there. I'll do that here in a minute once uh, everything else is done. But otherwise, now we have to be careful whenever we're removing the pot to make sure we 
feed it enough slack to move, but that's what it looks like underneath. And we are getting And we're getting room temperature sort of readings, 78, 79 degrees from where I've been handling it. So it looks like everything's pretty much working. I just need to put this guy back together, a couple screws here, and we'll be able to test it out and see, see how it works. All right, I think we're back together. Here's the, uh, the spring thingy. I took the end of it and bent the leading part of it. Hopefully I can get it through the hole. Get in there. And then just start twisting it a little bit to feed the spring in there just a touch. And there we go. That's not too bad. I did of course put the old thermocouple back on here and it's, uh, these are stripped out so bad. I'm gonna have to come up with a permanent remedy here for for this thermocouple mount if I end up using it instead of the internal. But hopefully this internal will work because it's certainly more convenient. All right, I'm gonna put some lead in this guy and we're gonna heat it up. And I'll see you guys once we're back up to temp. Okay, we are up to temp. I've let it sit for a while and kind of chill out and get, uh, get itself straightened out. We are currently on the old thermocouple and it is dancing right around 700. I also pulled out my Lyman uh, thermometer and it reads a little bit hotter than uh, the PID does. It's sitting at about 730 is what it says. So the big question, let's disconnect this thermocouple right at 700 right now. And let's connect the other one. Six seventy-five, so twenty-five degrees there. So I tell you what, I think let's take a series of like observations here. Let's write this first one down here. It was twenty-five. Need a pen. Excuse me. Now what I want to do is give this a few minutes to uh, restabilize and let it get up to seven hundred on the uh, the new thermocouple, the internal thermocouple. So once it's 700 with this one, I think it's freaked out. You see how it's not, the output light isn't on. You don't hear it buzzing. You don't hear it pulsing. It's like the whole thing is kind of freaked out. So let's, let's shut this guy off and turn it back on. See if it starts heating. All right. Now it's at least started to pulse the output a little bit and send some power to our, uh, to our pot. So, Let's give it a minute to chill out. These, uh, these thermocouples can be a little bit, uh, well, I should say the PID can be a little bit wonky. And I think at the very least, it will be a really good idea to run it through an auto tune with the new thermocouple design. So it's able to, uh, to learn about how the heat, the, the pot heats up with the thermocouple in the new position. My understanding is these things are constantly learning and trying to uh, refine themselves. So yeah, now it's really uh, putting out quite a bit of power. So let's let's give this a minute to get up to 17, uh, 700, and then we'll take another measurement and see where it is. All right, this guy's been sitting for a while on the internal thermocouple, and it's having a really hard time honing in on exactly 700. So I think it definitely, definitely will benefit from an auto-tune cycle so that the PID can learn about how this uh, thermocouple acts. So right now, this guy says 709. The Lyman thermometer actually says 760. And let's see what the other thermocouple says. So 709. I don't trust these. Uh, <laughs> numbers takes a few minutes for it to settle yeah 740s let's call it 745 what were we at 740 where we were at 709 to 745 so that's uh about 35 all right going back to the internal let's give it one more minute to 
to chill out. I'd really like to see it get down to 700 and, and kind of get to stabilizing. Because normally on a pot where you're not adding lead and you're not casting bullets, it should be able to maintain two or three degrees of swing. So let's just give it a few more minutes to chill out. Okay, it's only been a minute, but now we made it down to 700. Let's see if we still have the same differential. So about 27, upper 20s. So that is definitely close enough for me. So it's our first reading was 25 degrees, next was 35, next was 27. You know, if we called it 30, then that might be uh, pretty close. This is very close to what Elvis Ammo was seeing, about 30. So let's go, let's go back to the internal and I'll go ahead and show you how to, how to uh, change the offset if that's the way you want to fix this problem. Luckily, this setting is in the easy, there, there's two menus in this guy. The easiest one to get into, you just press and hold the yellow set button. And it goes right into the menu and you see this is the a, alarm one set point. We, we don't use alarm. So we hit set to keep uh, scrolling through our options here. This is mainly alarm stuff. But let's see. The one we're looking for, actually I just passed it. It looks like PUF. I don't know what it stands for, but it's P-U-F. Now this thermocouple is reading 20, or what did we say, 30 degrees lower than the other. So my understanding is that, so once we want to change something, then we hit the, uh, I think we hit the blue button. That starts flashing. We can add in positive values or we can switch to negative values. I'm pretty sure all we need to do is set this up to 30, which we can hit the blue button again, it'll move the flashing cursor over to the next one. There's 30. But before I do this, let's go back out of the menu and get another reading on our temperature. Okay, it's currently showing 655. Should change to about 685 whenever we change the setting. Crap, passed it up. Okay, puff. 1, 2, 30. What do we say? 685 is about where we, all right, apparently that was the wrong direction. So we need to make it negative 30. Press and hold to, in, to exit the menu, or you can just wait. Okay, 690. Now the problem, you know, that, that offset covers everything. So we put this guy in, it'll read, uh, it, it'll also have that same 30 degree offset. So now it's just reading 30 degrees high. Okay, now it's chilling out. It should be uh, reasonably stable here at 700. Let's, let's remove it again. Make sure that uh, it should go down to about 670. And it does. So that's how you, you put in the offset if you choose to. I don't think I'm going to. I think seeing how mine performs and how Elvis Ammo's performed, I think that's a, uh, hopefully that'll prove to be a uh, pretty constant offset, you know, maybe uh, 25 degrees lower than the actual pot temperature is the that nozzle temperature. And I think I'll just go forward Keeping that in mind, you know, if somebody says, hey, I, you know, I have a lot of luck at 750 degrees, then I know that, okay, I need to set mine for about 720, which will, you know, correspond to a 750 degree pot temperature. So I think that's how I'm going to deal with it moving forward. Now, like I said before, 
we need to run back through an auto tune and to do an auto tune, you want to be reasonably cool. Like it doesn't have to be all the way down to room temperature, but I want to shut this guy off and let it sit until it goes down. You know, maybe it's below 200 degrees. And then once it's there, we'll run through an auto tune real quick. All right. I think we've cooled down long enough to start our auto tune. One thing I did want to, uh, mention, cause I noticed, I think Elvis ammo and fortune cookie were both, uh, having this problem. The, uh, this plug, there's two styles of thermocouple plug. This is like the, uh, the smaller style. And then there's a larger style that fits in these two big holes. The small slits at the top of the small holes are where this can actually go. You can actually put it into the big holes and it, and it kind of goes in there. I think that's the way you guys were uh, using it and it, it works. It absolutely works. But if you want a tighter fit, you can go up into these, uh, guys up here and slide it in there. It's a nice tight fit. It also only goes in that slot one way because one of the blades is a little larger than the other. So you got a big and a small putting them down here. You could get it reversed, but yep. Just wanted to mention that. So if we flip this on, let's see what our temperature is. There we go. 194 degrees. So all you have to do to start the auto tune is press and hold the blue button. The one that says AT for auto tune here in just a couple seconds, the, there it is. The uh, green AT light will come on. That means it is in auto tune mode. A couple things, very important things for auto tune is I've found the best results by running the auto tune with a half pot of lead. You'll get different values if your pot is empty or if it's full or if it's uh, kind of half full. So if you're not happy with the way your PID is running and you know that you auto tuned it with a full pot of lead, try a half pot or try, you know, a, a, a nearly empty pot, just a couple pounds of lead in it. So you can kind of use that to help out with your auto tuning. So the auto tune will run long enough to where the temperature goes up to the set point and beyond it. And then it comes back down. And then once it gets back down to the set point, I think that is when the auto tune is going to stop. So you need to wait until it goes all the way through its natural auto tune cycle. So let's speed up, do a little time lapse and, uh, we'll see how well it, stabilizes after the autotune's finished. All right, so our auto tune finally finished and the, the green light went out. That took about 20, almost 25 minutes. But now it should be a whole lot smarter about controlling the temperature with, uh, with the internal thermocouple, hopefully. I want to let it run a few minutes here and observe it. And then we'll wrap up this video and call it done. All right, this guy has been rock steady between 700 and 702 now for about 10 minutes here. I've been watching it. So I think we're good. I think that's, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. 
Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, I'm just going to go with the, the internal thermocouple for a while and see how I like it. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be real good. Definitely out of the way. I think, uh, and yeah, just overall more convenient. I did, I went ahead and removed my other thermocouple. And I'm just going to roll with it this way for a while and see what I think. So I'm with you, Elvis Ammo. Thanks for the idea. Seems like a pretty good idea to me, and I'm going to try it out with you. So more to come, more follow-ups. I'm sure uh, we'll get, keep you guys informed about how it's working. But see you guys next time.